Alice stands at the center of a train cart. There is a clock at either end of the cart. Alice fires two light pulses which move in the opposite direction. The pulses reach the rear of the cart and the front of the cart at the same time. When each pulse reaches its respective end of the cart, it sets the clock for 12 p.m. Since the pulses traveled at the same speed, that is the speed of light, and they traveled the same distance, each arrives at its clock at the same time. The two clocks are now synchronized and Alice is happy. Bob, on the other hand, is watching this whole scenario from the train station. In Bob's frame of reference, the pulses also move at the speed of light. However, Alice's cart is moving at a significant velocity to the right. Because the rear of the cart is moving in the direction of the one light pulse, it reaches its clock before the right light pulse reaches its clock. Therefore, in Bob's frame of reference, the two clocks will not be synchronized. Bob will see the rear clock as being ahead of the front clock. How far ahead is the rear clock compared to the front clock in Bob's frame of reference? To answer that question, let's place Alice forward in the cart so that as Bob watches, the, the clocks will be synchronized. Let's suppose the cart has a length L and we'll place Alice a distance of X from the front. That would place her a distance of L minus X from the rear. Now let's look at the time taken by each of the pulses. The left pulse travels a distance of L minus X at a speed C. The right pulse travels a distance of X also at a speed C. However, because the rear of the cart is approaching the left light pulse, the effective speed is C plus V. And likewise, because the front of the cart is receding from its light pulse, its effective speed is C minus V. And recall, these two times observed in Bob's frame of reference are equal. Now we'll rearrange the elements of this equation. In Alice's frame of reference, when she fires off the two shots, the one on the right will hit its clock first after traveling a distance of X. However, the pulse on the left will have a distance of L minus X minus X or L minus 2X still to travel. She is measuring that light pulse as traveling at a speed of C. So therefore, in Alice's frame of reference, the time that this clock will be out will be equivalent to L minus 2x over C, which is the same as L times the velocity of Alice's train divided by C squared. This time differential L times V all over C squared shows that what we might call the temporal gradient is dependent only on distance and velocity given that the speed of light is a constant. Usually we think of relativistic effects as only happening at high velocities. However, we could also describe relativistic effects at long distances. For example, 
consider the Andromeda Galaxy. It's 2.5 million light years from Earth. Suppose Alice is running at a reasonable speed, say five kilometers an hour towards Bob and also toward the Andromeda Galaxy while Bob is sitting on a bench. Alice and Bob will disagree by a matter of days as to what now means on the Andromeda Galaxy. For example, suppose the Andromeda Galaxy sends an evil armada of spaceships to invade the Earth two and a half million light years away. It's possible that for Alice, the invasion forces have already left, whereas for Bob, the Andromedans might still be the Andromedans may still be in their parliament arguing about whether this invasion should happen. Alice and Bob are both receiving the same information at the same time as Alice passes Bob in the park. However, Alice and Bob will disagree on the interpretation of that information. Furthermore, can Alice and Bob really talk about current events on Andromeda when the information that they receive is 2.5 million years old. This raises questions known as the Andromeda Paradox, which you can read about in the, in the link in the description.